Well, now uh, one of Britain's uh, top epidemiologists and an acknowledged expert on public health, Professor Raj Bhopal, last month published a paper in the journal of Public Health in Practice, where he said that until a reliable vaccine is produced, then herd immunity, the very controversial and taboo uh, phrase herd immunity, is the only long-term solution to the pandemic. And he has said that this strategy applies to India as well. In his uh, paper titled The COVID uh, Zugzwang, uh, Potential Public Health Moves Towards Population immunity he calls herd immunity population immunity he says we can't keep the economy locked down and need to revisit controversial the controversial issue of herd immunity for our children who are missing out on school for the young people who are missing out on their incomes well uh, we're now joined by professor Bhopal uh, thank you so much for speaking uh, to NDTV and first and foremost do tell us about this paper where you've argued for re-looking at herd immunity Yes, well, I have published a paper with a title, COVID-19 Zugzwang, uh, Towards Population Immunity. Now, a Zugzwang is a position in chess where every move is a bad move, and you have to try and stay in the game. And you have to have everything you can possibly do, you have to think it through. There's only two ways to control a pandemic in the long term, and that is either through vaccination or through a fairly substantial number of people getting the infection and developing their own immunity. And we should be thinking about employing both of these strategies. Now, if we had a safe and effective vaccine, we wouldn't be having this discussion. Now, a safe and effective vaccine is on the distant horizon. At the very earliest, uh, serious uh, scientists are saying, we will be able to demonstrate safety and effectiveness by about next summer. That's a very long time away, given uh, how much COVID-19 is occurring. So in the meantime, we should be thinking about, since infections are occurring anyway, it's not as if we've stopped them. Huge numbers of infections are occurring. Our approach should be a logical one. And the logical approach is that for children and young people, this is a fairly harmless disease. It very rarely causes death, and it very rarely causes uh, problems that are serious enough to lead to intensive care for young people. And when I say young people, I'm really talking about people under 25, perhaps even under 30. So in my paper, I have argued that the people who are being hurt most by lockdowns and other measures being taken by governments are young people. And the people who are benefiting most from these lockdowns are older people, people like myself. Um, and we should think it through more carefully by relaxing our restrictions on young people and making the restrictions on older people even more severe um, so that the young people will, will build up immunity. And I have estimated that 40 to 50% of people being infected with this infection is enough to build up herd immunity. If we have some other control measures that keep the reproductive, the R number, at around one, between one and two. So that's my argument. We've published it, and uh, huge numbers of people have been in support of this argument. Well, it's very interesting, you know, that you put the herd immunity number at 40 to 50 percent, because I believe this is also something that is debated. Uh, people have different numbers for this. And, uh, you know, there have been lots of differing views uh, about uh, when we will achieve that herd immunity. If we, the, the proportion of the population that needs to um, be infected or to be immunized depends on how many people each case infects. So that's called the R number. If we take a disease like measles, measles, a one case of measles will cause something like 14 new cases of measles. And we need 90% plus population immunity for measles. But for a disease like COVID-19, where the, each person is infecting approximately three, four people, we don't need 90%. But if through reasonable control measures, like some degree of social distancing, good hygiene measures, 
a few things, we seem to be able to keep the R number between one and two. If it's as low as that, then 40 to 50% is enough. And over time, the virus will be controlled. If uh, we keep the R number below one, we need an, an even smaller proportion. Now, other colleagues of mine, including scientists in Oxford, have calculated the, the percentage as low as 25%. A colleague in Glasgow has calculated it 20%. So my estimate of 40 to 50% is trying to be very conservative because I didn't want people starting to argue with me about what the right number is. So I chose a high number. Now, you will find in the literature a bit of a debate around this, but I think my number of 40 to 50%, no one has quibbled with it really. Uh, and huge numbers of people have participated in debates with me and not a single person has quibbled. Some people have said, you're overestimating it. Yeah. 